everyone, I'm Prophetess Jane. I'm an elder at City Family Church in Coventry. And today I want to bring you an exhortation called Jesus Washed Judas' Feet. At the Last Supper, just a few hours before Judas betrayed Jesus, Jesus washed Judas' feet along with all the other disciples' feet. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him in just a few hours and to death. But Jesus washed his feet. Only slaves washed feet. Jesus brings us a new reality, an unseen reality. When Jesus removed his outer garments and wrapped a towel around himself, he was doing what only a slave would do. He was now dressed as a slave. In Luke twenty-two twenty-seven, 27 we read, Who do you think is the greater? The one at the table or the one who serves? Who's the greatest? Words of Jesus. I'm among you as one who serves, he said. <laughs> Jesus tells us that we should wash one another's feet. Jesus wasn't impressed with people as such, by people's titles, by impressive people. They didn't impress Jesus. Jesus took the position of the slave and he said this is greater. In everyday life, as it is today, there was a pecking order of the importance of people. Jesus, as always, turned this way of thinking on its head. Jesus always turns everything that is upside down, the right way up. We're so used to how society sees things and how society reasons in the mind. We're so used to that. The way life is lived, it's, we're so used to who is at the top and who is at the bottom. And then we see Jesus turning it all around. <laughs> it's shocking. It's unearthly. It's refreshing. It's releasing. People who were considered nobodies with no power in life would discover that there is no such thing as a nobody with Jesus. And that all the power of the Holy Spirit is available to all who believe. There's no room for elitism in Christianity with Jesus, but only the way of humility. Romans 12, 16 tells us not to be proud, but to be willing to associate with people of low position. Some people despise humility. They see it as something that's weak. Jesus challenges our world view. Jesus, the maker of the world. Jesus, our heavenly father, our creator, tells us to walk in humility and not pride. Greatness and the culture of celebrity is challenged in our own minds as we see and hear the truth of Jesus. Obedience is better than sacrifice. A good life. What is a good life? How does someone live a good life? A good life is a life that is blessed by Jesus. 
In the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, which some have called the beautiful attitudes, Jesus teaches us about the condition of our hearts, which are clearly seen by God day and night, 24-7. Let me read you the Beatitudes. Matthew 5. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, he said, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice! Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets that were before you. Jesus, in Luke 11, 37-52, had harsh words for the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day or of any day. He had harsh words for them. He told them they were hypocrites. He told them that they were in error and that they didn't understand the scriptures. The Pharisees the and the religious leaders of the day, they were admired by all. The Pharisees plotted to kill Jesus. Jesus causes us to look at ourselves to see if we too are rejecting Jesus, like the Pharisees and the religious teachers did and seeing ourselves as morally superior. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jesus wants us to surrender our hearts to him. If you hold to my teachings, you really are my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus tells us the truth. We may find it painful before we find it liberating. Jesus doesn't pull back any punches with the truth. Jesus loves us and wants his life to fill us and flow from us. He gives us a life that is worth living, that is significant, whole, daring and completely in step with him. Remember, the tomb is empty. He is risen. He is alive. 
He's alive. He's real. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. You are living the with God life. With God. You are living the with God life. You are not living by yourself. But you are living with him. Made alive in him, your creator. The lover of your soul. The one who loves you with unconditional agape love. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you recognise that from the Lord's Prayer? Surrendering to Jesus is an attitude of the heart, a bowing of your heart. Not my will, but your will be done. Serving one another comes from a servant heart of serving Jesus. He has to be put first. You serve because you serve Jesus. We are living in the unseen reality, the kingdom of God, unearthly and other rejoicing and delighting in Jesus on a journey of real life and discovery with the joy and the power of the Holy Spirit. This, Jesus says, is greatness. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus and you want to know Jesus, pray this prayer with me now. Don't put it off. Today is the day of salvation. Pray this prayer. Dear God, please forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross for me and he rose again on the third day and he is alive. Come into my heart and my life as my Lord and my Saviour. Amen. And if you've just prayed that prayer, you are now a Christian. You have a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus. You can talk to him and hear him, listen to him anywhere, anytime. Get yourself a Bible. A suggestion is a New International Version or an English Standard Version. After lockdown, Hopefully it won't be too long now. Join a lively Bible-believing church where your faith in Jesus will grow and develop with other people just like you who have come to know Jesus and are on this journey of knowing him more and more. Amen. And we have a wonderful website. Please check out our website www cityfamilychurch.com There's lots on there for you to engage with, to be ministered to by Jesus through his people, through the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. So have a look at our website, you will be blessed. And I bless you now in the name of Jesus. Amen.